you're a regular viewer to this video channel, you'll probably know that I enjoy messing about with antennas. And sometimes you know, I come up with something that uh, I think, well, will that work? Or is it too simple? But something I came up with recently was something I've been trying um, in the garden here, and uh, it seems to work quite well. Now, I know a lot of you, particularly in the summer months now, when it's not raining, of course, um, like to go out portable. You go down to the beach, set up a, an antenna on the beach, or park up beside the road somewhere, find some field where there's no noise, and uh, do some operation. Well, this particular antenna, um, I rather like, actually, because it's self-supporting, doesn't need anything to support it, um, well, it, that's not quite true. It does need a bit of support, but it's something you can put in the boot of your car. And it seems to work quite well. And I have been trying it out, and for me, it seems to work remarkably well. It's very simple. I get a good VSWR. Don't need lots and lots of radials. It's vertical, by the way. You might have guessed that. It's a vertical antenna, so it's self-supporting. Doesn't need lots and lots of radials, but I've had some great contacts on it. So let me tell you what I did, and also explain a very basic fault I made when I was doing some work on this antenna, which puzzled me for, for about 15 minutes or so. I went backwards and forwards, and I thought, wait a minute, Peter, what a silly mistake to make. Let me show you what I did. I used the JPC-12 portable antenna for this uh, test that I was doing. I did a video on this antenna uh, a few months ago and you can see me here assembling the antenna. You get the idea, it's uh, an antenna with a loading coil in the centre and you can adjust it for all bands from 10 metres right through to 40 metres. Ground mounted verticals normally need radials and uh, you need a number of radials. And I'll uh, just show you here my typical setup. We've got the antenna, and on the right hand side, you'll see some grey radials, which I normally use with this antenna. It does take up a bit of space on the ground, it may be okay for some time, sometimes, but it may be an obstruction for people who are walking by. But we've also learnt that the best place for radials is not on the ground, but above the ground. Apparently it doesn't have to be very far above the ground. There's quite a few papers on the internet which explain um, why radials don't have to be on the ground and the benefit of them not being on the ground. The benefit of them not being on the ground is you need less of them and you get a bit of a gain. Um, Step IR have got an excellent paper about this if you take a look, but there are other papers as well. So it's common knowledge now that radials, although they work well on the ground, you need a lot of them. Get them off the ground and you need far less. In fact, uh, Step IR claim, and it's backed up by some other papers, that you only need two radials. The catch is those radials have got to be resonant. But no matter, if you can get a bit of gain, is it too much of a problem to have resonant radials? Well, I think we can go one step further. We know that if we have a single radial, the antenna gets a little bit of gain in the direction of that radial. So I thought, well, let's see how we can achieve this in a simple way. Now, one of the problems I saw was the fact that it's not too difficult to put radials above the ground, except when you say you've got to raise the antenna. Now, if you're out portable, it means to say that you've got to have some sort of sort of stub mast in the ground and then put your vertical on top and then put your radials or your single radio on. That's a bit of a sort of a problem really. It adds complexity to it, complexity to it. So I thought, is there another way? Well yes there is. Now let me show you. This is my kit of parts with my JPC12 and the zoom analyzer. And you see that I've made a bracket for the base so that I can easily attach radials. Trying to shoot this video is a bit of a problem. Just turn the camera on and we've got a plane going over. One of the problems with shooting videos when there's a little bit of outside and a bit of inside is that the weather is so unpredictable with this British summer we're having in 2024. Hence, I'm having to shoot bits of it on different days, which is why I'm using a different one, dressed in a different colour now to what I was probably a few moments ago. Anyway, 
What I was about to explain is that if we have the vid if we have the radials off the ground, we get something like two or three dB improvement in signal. And also, as I explained just now, if that radial is pointed in a particular direction if we use a single radial, then we get a little bit of gain, we get a little bit of front to back ratio. Not a lot, but enough to make a difference. Now, as I explained, raising an antenna off the ground may be okay at home, but if you're out portable, it's not so easy. It's a bit of extra gear you've got to take. And I reasoned that actually you probably don't have to raise the radial off the ground at the feed point. That's a high current point. It's not very sensitive. The part of the radial that's going to be really sensitive where it's placed is the middle and the end. So I reasoned that if we were to ankle the radial at near the ground or on the ground, but then pull it off the ground at an angle, say of I don't know, 30 degrees, something like that, at the far end. The most of the radio would be above ground, and we'd probably get similar results to raising the antenna off the ground. Now, I did some interesting tests last night, actually. It was um, about quarter, quarter to midnight. The 20 metre band supposedly was closed. In fact, I couldn't hear anything at all. Uh, I was running QRP from the X6100, which I'll just show you here, it's on the window ledge um, of the conservatory, and I had my uh, vertical antenna outside with a radial pointing in a easterly direction. And then I suddenly heard L, an LZ3, LZ3AR I think it was, calling CQ. I went back to him and I got a good report, 5.7. Not bad for 8 watts into a vertical in my back garden, particularly when the band was supposedly dead. And then I listened further up, again on a band which was totally dead, apart from one signal calling CQ, 9K2, it was 9K2, I can't remember the suffix now, or maybe 9K2MU, something like that. I went back to him, but I got a QRZ several times. He obviously couldn't hear me, but it was in Q8. So I thought, well, I'm going to put out a call now. Um, I was on the QRP channel, by the way, 14.060. Uh, and I put out a test call, and this was just on midnight. And I got a report back from China with a 5 dB above noise. Now, 8 watts on a dead band. China. Quite amazing. Now, I couldn't work him because he was just a, just a reverse beacon station. But it did prove to me two things, that the vertical was working, and also, when the 20 metre band appears to be dead, particularly late at night, check it out. I've done this time and time again over the last year. Listen on 20 metres late at night, the band ostensibly seems to be dead, but it's not. It's not always. You just need somebody to call CQ. So give it a check. Anyway, back to this antenna. I've got a very good VSWR. Um, it was a good, uh, a good match. And I thought, well, what about if I raise the, vert the, the radial almost immediately after it leaves the ground point? And I'll show you a picture here where I just put a little bit of a stake in the ground. I think it was a, a part of a gardening cane or something. And I raised that radial um, off the ground almost immediately after it left the feed point. So the radio went up like that and then up like that. That improved the VSWR a bit. Now whether or not it improved the signal I don't know. But it does show you that radials raised above the ground do work. It's not too difficult to raise the radial above the ground particularly if you're able to actually stick the vertical in the ground. Now, this idea is really for portable operation. You might want to check it out on your home station. It doesn't mean to say, as I said earlier, you've got to have resonant radials for each band, but it's an interesting experiment. I should 
perhaps explain how you set this antenna up because it's not quite as you might expect. The first essential is to make sure the vertical element is resonant and you probably need to lay down a couple of short radials, two or three radials, about three meters long um, in a conventional way on the ground just to get the vertical element to resonance and you can check that with a VSW meter or an antenna analyzer which is the easy way of doing it. Once you've got that antenna resonant then you can remove the radials on the ground and just put the single radial uh, connect that to the uh, antenna base uh, in other words that's the negative side the earth side of the coax cable and run that radial up at an angle of around about 15 degrees the angle is not critical but you just want that radial off the ground all the way that radial will actually affect the resonant point and a good starting point is to actually measure out the quarter wave of wire and a bit more and attach it to the base of the antenna. Then rerun your VSWR checks and you'll probably find that the antenna has shifted in resonance. And that's because the radial actually affects the resonance of the antenna. That's why you need to get the vertical element in tune first of all before you start messing about with the radial. And all you have to do is to adjust the radial to get the VSWR in the point of the band that you want to operate on. The bandwidth is pretty wide. Uh, I've resonated mine near the bottom of the uh, 20 meter band because that's the band, that's the area of the band I operate on, CW mainly. Um, but the radio will actually tune the antenna anywhere in the band and actually outside the band. So make sure you get that, get that right, you get the length right to start with. And one quick tip about adjusting any wire antenna, um, such as uh, this radial, Fold it back on itself to make it shorter and fold less back on itself to make it longer. Um, you don't need to cut it really once you've got the length just uh, unless you've initially got a lot of wire folded back on itself. Uh, just put a cable tie around it and uh, job's done. Now a word of warning, in order for this system to work it's absolutely essential you insert a line isolator right at the point where the coax attaches to the base of the vertical. It's absolutely essential if you want to get good results. Now at the beginning of this video I said I made a mistake and here it is. If you look at this picture you'll see I mistakenly fitted the line isolator at the end of the coax run. I've got the coax coiled up when I was doing some tests but the line isolator is actually at the end of the coax run where it would go into the transceiver. I was getting all sorts of weird and wonderful readings on the VSWR meter. So get the get that right, get that line isolator in the right position just at the point where the feeder attaches to the antenna. So give it a try, see how you get on and you let me know what results you get. Well, there we are. Yes, let me know how you get on with this uh, antenna idea. It's just an idea. It's very simple, but uh, I was quite impressed with the results I got, and it's ideal for portable work. By the way, um, check our website. We uh, have been running a blog now for the last two or three months. The blogs tend to be a summary of some of the videos that we've done with some additional information, so it's worth uh, checking it out. To get to the blog, go onto our website, the front page, top left, there's a menu item there, click on that, and it'll take you to our blog. In the meantime, thank you for your support on this channel. Don't forget, forget to uh, press the subscribe button. That simply alerts you to when there's a, another video coming up. And thank you for your support at the shop and uh, ordering on the website. We've got a wide range of products. We've got some good prices. There's all sorts of bits and pieces tucked away on our website. You need to take some time to hunt around it. But it's interesting. So whether it's an accessory, a small accessory, or a new rig, or a new antenna, take a look and we'll be happy to help you out. If you've got any questions, don't forget, ring one of our guys and chat over what you are thinking of buying, whether it's right for you, or if you've got a problem you want to solve, how do I fit this antenna, uh, what do I put it on, what rotator do I need, that sort of thing, give us a call. In the meantime, you take care, enjoy your hand radio, 
look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.